children. Hello and welcome to Dancers Support Mission by Sabine Channel for Shine Your Light. Today we have a new episode of Dancer to Dancer, Words of Wisdom. And the goal of those interviews is to meet the person behind the dancer and share with you all not only the highlights of someone's career, but also the challenges behind the scenes. Truly, my wish is to bring healing into the dance world, dancing to heal, healing to dance, one artist at a time and one personal story at a time. Hopefully, this will allow you to embark on your and reflect on your own personal uh, healing journey inspired by others' experiences. And um, this is a special uh, episode uh, because it's the first of the year 2023. And I'm really, <laughs> I'm really happy to welcome my very good friend, Hervé Courtin. Hervé, we met a long time ago. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, I think I fell in love with you huh? the first time when we went to Boston. <laughs> Until I understood that, you know. <laughs> but I mean, we were very, we stayed very close. We moved uh, to be with you in Montreal as well, you know, what was it, what, like 10 years later or something? So, I mean, yeah. we followed each other um, and separated and followed each other. I mean, it was, it's a very old friendship. So I'm really, really, happy and uh, grateful that you accepted to do this interview. Hervé, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to be with me. So um, let's start with the beginning. You know, I, I really want to have the, the history of a person because I always find it really fun to know how someone started, why they started, what age, you know, and when did you decide that you would do that as a profession? Okay. Um, well, I think the first time I took like dance class, I was around like five, five or six. My mom decided to put me in a class. Um, I stayed only for one year because I was the only boy. And then a couple of years later, I was probably around like 12 years old or 10 years old. And we saw a, a show of a school with my sister and that's when the, the dance kicked again, you know? And uh, then I asked my mom to go back into a class and I started with jazz, actually. And uh, <laughs> two years you after- have the best, uh, You have the best jazz dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, after two years, I, I said to my mom and, and my dad that I wanted to be a, a dance teacher. I didn't know we could be a, a dancer. So I, I talked to my teacher and she said to me, well, before being a, a teacher, you can actually be a dancer. And then that's when she decided to uh, send me to the conservatory of Versailles where I stayed there for like a year and a half. And then um, the teacher sent me to uh, uh, Daniel Frank Academy uh, in Paris. And he was a teacher in Paris of Rome. So he and uh, Monica Rabian, who was also working with him, uh, prepared me for the for the test of Paris Opera. You know, you have like you have to go through different stages, and and then you get into the the class. And at fourteen years old, I joined the Paris Opera Ballet School. I did four that years. That was late, there. no? Fourteen. Yeah, it was at the very end. It was my last. It was I got there at thirteen and a half, and I started fully at fourteen. Uh, because you have six months of uh, not preparation, uh, a stage. I don't know, probation, stage. probation, right? To, to... Yeah, that kind of a probation uh, program. And um, from 14 to 18 years old, that's when I was in school. And then I joined the company, Paris Opera Ballet, for 12 years, where I rose to the rank of sujet, which is soloist. And uh, after that, I took a sabbatic year and then came back and then left for Montreal. Yeah, well, that that's quite condensed, you know. For anyway, I want to come back to, <laughs> I want to come back to to Paris Opera School, you know, because that's a big. I mean, from the moment you started uh, in the school, you knew that this is what you wanted to do. Then you had no questions. Absolutely, absolutely. It was a. I think the big thing for me was to be surrounded by kids who wanted to do the same thing, and who had the same goal. So even though the school is, um, I mean, it's pretty intense, you know, you have a lot of classes that uh, it was, a, it could be hard because every year you had to have like a, a, an, an exam. exam. And yeah, you could be either like kicked out or you would pass in the other, 
in the other class. Uh, and at the end, you're not even sure to have a job because when you uh, when you want to join the Paris Super Ballet, you it's only a matter of contract that are available, like in most companies, you know. But it, the the number of contracts in Paris Opera, Opera Ballet always the same. It's 154. So if people are not retiring, you have no room to get in. And uh, I've been lucky enough to to join the company, but it's uh, there are seasons where there's only like one spot or two spots available. My season, we had like four guys and four girls which was yeah because you were a whole class that actually you know stuck <laughs> together for quite a I long time ten, yeah yeah yeah. i think we were like 10 guys and 10 girls but you know we've been uh, lucky enough to uh, for half of us to actually join the company so but, was, but you know you say it's funny because you had not re a real idea of what it's you know, what you could do actually with dance and yet you so you you just followed the flow yeah somehow. i mean i think the most important thing for me was to move you know the movement was what what was the most important thing for me i didn't know what it was going to be uh, at the end what what meant to be a, a dancer to have a career you know it's like <laughs> funny enough when i joined the company i my i remember my first class i had no idea where to go i didn't know what it was going to look like and uh, i barely had seen any any shows you know of paris opera you know, it's just, so it was what was really important for me was to feel and to move and i remember my mom saying to me you know you're going to do a career where you're going to move around a lot so that's something that was compelling to me and so there was movement in where i was going to be but also movement in the way i'm going to i was going to express myself okay and how was how was those those how were those years how many years did you do with paris opera i mean the school okay. The school, the school, I stayed there for four years. So we had, uh, you always had like a, a principal teacher who you would take the, the daily class for an hour and a half. Uh, that was the first class. Then you had a second class with another teacher. And then you had the third class was usually either like a partnership uh, uh, or you could have like a dance history or anatomy, you know, that kind of stuff. And you would also rehearse at night the shows for the for the annual show you know and the, in the morning was for a uh, regular school you know so it was separated in half and we i was staying in the in the dorms because uh, the the school is amazing i mean the facilities are just incredible you can you, you have your the dorm you have the the school the normal school and the, those big huge uh, studios uh, you have a garden it's it's amazing it's amazing and it's like 15 minutes from Paris Opera Ballet. It's outside of Paris, but it's connected through the, the through the subway. So, you know, it was intense, but I, I loved it. And they, I just remember being really happy to go back every weekend. For some people, it was okay. really hard to leave their family. Me, it was just like, I want to go back. I want to go back, I just said. And I felt very, uh, for the first time, I felt very surrounded by friends. You know, that's why I developed all my friendship and those like minded still... people, right? You were on the same boat and you wanted to exactly. go in the same direction. Yeah. So that really yeah. was very important for you. Yeah. Did you, did you enough... actually dance with the sorry, but did you dance with the company when you were part of the school? Uh no, I didn't actually actually. There was one year where they did not crack her and I, I didn't get in. They said to me I was too tall, <laughs> which is funny because <laughs> at the end of <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the process of the school, they were like, well, you're kind of small, so it might be a problem. But, you know, yeah. I'm like 5'11", and I made it, and it was totally fine even during the company. But, uh, yeah, I never really had the opportunity. The only thing that happened connected to the company was the defile that we would do every year, where the whole company uh, oh, yeah. walks down the stage, you know. and Presentation. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that's the only thing. That's, that was the main uh, event that was connected uh, with the company for me. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty organic, right? You after you joined the company, and then so how was that for you? You know, as you said, it was everything was brand new and everything. Did you know what to expect? Did you? I mean, because it feels to me that you just went on a ride, you know, and you were, oh, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Let's keep on going. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. I had like no preconceived uh, idea of how it's gonna, mm -hmm. how it was gonna be. Um, it always felt to me, and it's, it's in res retrospective after a couple of years after uh, leaving the company, that it was kind of the same path at the school because it's always the same dancers. People that are in the school, are in the company, were actually in the school. So it always felt like 
not the normal process, but it was a continuity of the school. So I never felt like I was finding myself in a way, you know, mm. it, the, most of the time, pe- the way people see you in school would be the way they would see you in the company. It was really hard to get Stereotype. out of it. You were like, you had a label and that was... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard to get out of it. And maybe it was only my way it of... It can be both it. great and terrible, right? Because, yeah, you know... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It can be a huge way. But um, I... What I remember was just that I was um, I was just amazed by the the organization of it. You know, the the yeah. the there were so many choreographers. That they were we were rehearsing so many things at the same time. We would take classes with the with all the principals and some. You know, only the first year where you have you had to have your own class with the people who are transitioning from the school to the company. But after that, it was. You know, you were totally free. You had like a six class in the morning that you could choose of, uh, choose from, and and I had my best friend, you know, uh, Benjamin Pesh, and we went through that, and and it was a lot of fun. You know, also discovering your life, uh, living in Paris, the theater is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it was a lot of fun. I, I really really had a great time. Okay, so what made you decide to? move somewhere else because we met at this audition you know for Boston Ballet in the Ménagerie de Revere where we we waited we, we didn't know each other but we had to yeah. wait like eight hours before we had to do our solos and we ended up us and two other friends from the Dutch National as well right yeah. and we became friends already and we were the only three with Gail you and me who were taken for I mean which was pretty amazing right yeah. So out of like I don't know, it was like eight hundred people. <laughs> that thing it was crazy. It took, yeah, it was a long day. It was a yeah, it was a day. huge, very long day. So on a very slippery floor. I mean, we, none of us could dance properly. It was really fun, but that's another subject. But um, why why did you decide to, you know, take a year off? Because this is what you did, right? You took a, le- a year leave of absence. That's what you can do with Paris Opera. The, the first thing is that. It's like you know to 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 go through the ranks in Paris Opera, you have to do that competition, and it's also a matter of how many spots are available. Um, and I went, I, I rose to sujet like pretty fast. At twenty three, I was sujet, and then for four years, I didn't, you know, I didn't go up. You know, I was like stuck and stuck there. So I was like, I, I was twenty seven when I decided to uh, to take. 27 or 28 to take that sabbatic year because it was an opportunity to me to see where I was standing, you know, and I felt like, okay, I'm dancing in Paris Opera. I have like opportunities, you know, I was working with a lot of different people. I had like responsibilities. I was part of the group of Manuel Le Gros, so, so we were doing a lot of guesting and all of that, but I felt, okay, I also need to see, I, I think I needed to find myself, you know, as I was saying, like the way people would see me or how I would see myself was actually that kid from school, you know? And I think it was important for me to suddenly take a step back. And um, I, I mean, I took that audition for Boston Ballet. It was almost, I didn't expect anything of it, except that, okay, I'm gonna try and see what, what's gonna happen. And it was right at the time where there was that competition to get promoted. And so I did the kind of the same solo that I was gonna do. And I didn't, I didn't get the, the the contract. I mean, the the, the post, as we say. Um, but my mom said to me, you know, you did that audition. Maybe it's going to go somewhere. And a couple of days after, I was taking that audition, and then they said that they were interested. So I took I took the job. And yeah, I was but like, well, there is there is you know, there, it's a big step to do an audition and to see how it was going to go, and then to actually pack your bag and go. Yeah, but I, I was ready. I, re- I was ready for so- for something else, you know. I was like, okay, I need to... because the pressure also in Paris Opera is that every year you have new people coming in from the school, you know, and that school is so good that year after year the kids are even better and better and better. So well, it's I like that with I... every company. I mean, you know, you always have the eight yeah. people that come up and can do <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the thing is, like, I. I think I, in my head, I was like, okay, I worked a lot to get into the, the school, then to get into the company. And then I didn't want to be bitter if I was not going to get more responsibility. Or I, I, I felt like this is my life. This is the what I worked for. So what I want is to move. And that, that's it's always been in my head. I, I need to move. I need to move it. And if it was stagnant, then I was dying. 
So you need to and move up as well as not just move, move, move. You, Yeah, you it was expanding my stuff in every direction, you know, upside other country <laughs> or company, but I needed to expand myself. So I think that's that's really the and it's still the same today as I'm being a ballet master. I'm trying to go other places, not only in, in Montreal, you know, I'm trying to, to move because I need to expand, I need to, to see other things. So that's probably what dro drove me. So after that year in Boston, you dropped us and you went back to Paris, <laughs> <laughs> which was I was not really so not cool. happy about. So just tell us, I mean, what, what happened there, you know? So, uh, I, I mean, I loved my experience in Boston, but um, because it was uh, you, Gail, and I, we actually got hired by Mina Gilgold, which yeah. uh, at the end of the process didn't take over the the direction. So we we spent like half the season with Jordan Morris, who was like the uh, taking over, just you know, to while they were finding someone else. Then Nico Nissinen took over, and it was for me. It was a matter of like Nico didn't chose me. I was already there, and. If I was not going to go back to Paris Opera, I was going to lose my contract, which yeah. is a contract, contract, you know. So it was too much of a risk, you know, because if he would have fired me after a year because he didn't like me, which I don't know how it would have happened. Maybe it would have been great. But I was like, it's too much of a risk. So I decided to go back to Paris Opera. When I got there the first season, uh, it was great. I, I kept dancing, you know, and uh, I had other opportunities. But the second year, the beginning of the second year, I realized that I was starting to do the same thing. I had the same kind of opportunity, the same role where coming back, you know, and I felt, no, this is not what I want anymore. And also when I when I was in Boston Ballet, suddenly people were seeing me a different way. I uh, when I was in Paris Opera, I, I worked a lot with the contemporary choreographers and I always felt like they were seeing me more as a contemporary dancer. And when I went to Boston but people were like oh my god you're so classical so <laughs> something shift you know like, yeah, okay, yeah. I can be, yeah I can be something else I can uh, what I've done before doesn't define me you know I can I can mm -hmm. explain myself in a different way and and, and, and that's super important for young dancers to hear you know we sometimes we also get stuck because we think oh well we're so scared of doing something new and not you know be I mean, you have to try out things because that's another, it's a great point that, you know, you will be, if you stay in the same place, not only people will define you, but you will start defining yourself according to what they think. And when you move to another place, all of a sudden you have a complete new opportunities that open up for you. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, I think that was the, that's what I got from that experience in Boston. I was like, the, the only thing that's going to define me, it's myself and the opportunity, opportunities that I have. But you don't have to get stuck in a situation or in a, in a way of seeing yourself. And it's, yeah. uh, I, I grew a lot through that. You know, It was not so much about my dancing, but the way I was seeing my, my career. Because before that, I never thought about my career. <laughs> I, would think, I would think, you know, it's a... I would go with the flow, as I was saying. You know, I entered yeah. the company and I was like, okay, it's going well and whatever. But suddenly, I was like, no, I need to, you know, I need to take care of it. I need to uh, provide it to my career. I mm -hmm. cannot just wait for things to happen. Nice, um, yeah. So then, then you went back to Paris, but then, so you got the bug again, and you decided this time you were ready to leave for good, or you just exactly. wanted to try another thing. No, because I think, I mean, maybe I could have asked for another sabbatic year, but usually I think, I mean, in my time, it might have changed, but in my time, in my time, you had to wait for another five years before taking another one. So I was afraid that I, nobody was going to hire me, like probably around like 33, 34, you know. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm ready to leave, especially because the second season in Paris Opera after my sabbatic year was, we were doing old ballets and you know things that I didn't that I didn't like, and suddenly I felt like I was actually going reverse in my career, and 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 I couldn't stand it. You know, and I remember like auditioning in Amsterdam. You were like, okay, maybe you should come in Amsterdam, and it was so refreshing. I didn't get any job, but the director was really nice to me. He was like, well, you know, just it boosted me in a way. He was like, well, you know, you're a soloist, it's fine. I don't have any contracts, but you know. Yeah. Suddenly, I was like, okay, people Validated. can see. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I also went to um, Monaco, 
and Monaco, they were also interested. Uh, uh, Mayo told me, well, you know, I'm interested in, in the way you, you work. Uh, it would be great to have in the company, but I wanted to leave Paris Opera with a, a soloist contract. Because I was like, if I'm soloist in Paris Opera, I need to at least have the same kind of base. And then, then if I prove myself and can have like more, uh, a better contract or whatever. And he told me, he was like, well, right now I don't have anything and I don't want to take the chance of giving you a contract if, you know, which is totally normal. Some director yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, with that, some of some of them don't. So I didn't take the contract in, uh, in Monaco. And uh, I heard, I heard like an old friend, uh, she was in Montreal in Le Grand Valais Canadien and I decided to check online what was the rep, you know, that they were doing. And I saw that it was a mixed rep. So I just, that's when I decided to audition. I auditioned in, the, in Madrid for the company. And that's how I ended up in, uh, in Montreal. Right. And a year later, we joined you there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you were following me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But listen, so um, I know that Les Grands Ballets was a great, uh, I mean, as a dancer, you really, you, you really bloomed there and you, you shined and you, you know, so tell us a little bit about that part because it was quite a long time then in the end you really finished your career there as a dancer and and yeah. you really enjoyed it you know on so many yeah. levels I know because there's a lot of tours there's a lot of uh, you know Ohan Narin and a lot of choreographers that chose you so tell us a little bit about that yeah so I uh, when I auditioned for the company in Madrid um, Gradimir Pankov the director at the time uh, and who hired me was asking me what I was looking for. And I was like, you know, I, and funny enough, I, I already kind of knew him because he came to Paris Opera to give some, uh, um, some classes. So he remembered me and he was like, so why do you want to leave Paris Opera? I saw that you, I mean, you've had a responsibilities, you've danced and everything. And I was like, well, you know, first of all, I, I look for um, a smaller company where I could develop myself. And I also look for a company who's like a, a, a creation company. And I think that's probably what triggered him. It was like, okay, that's, because that's what he, he was doing, you know, the mm -hmm. Grand Ballet has always been like a creation uh, company. So it was like, okay. And I was like, and I, I want to develop myself in the company where I can become like, you know, a principal and uh, have more responsibilities. It was like, okay, okay, good. And that's how, that's how it went, you know? and. So I joined the company, I was 30 years old. So it was exactly, you know, after, from my 20s to 30 in Paris Opera and then moved to, uh, to Les Grands Ballets. So it was a perfect opportunity. And I knew that uh, if I was going to go there, I was probably going to finish my career there because, you know, after a certain age, you don't move around so much. So I got here and actually I didn't expect to have like responsibilities right away. But when I, when I arrived in Montreal, which actually the first, I never had put feet on, in Montreal. I had no idea what it was looking like. And my, <laughs> I arrived at the um, Gare Routière, how do you say that in English? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like where all the buses are. And I was like, what the heck is that city? It looked so ugly. And then I decided to go, to go around and it was fine. But anyway, I got into the company. <laughs> and the first ballet that they were doing was Romeo and Juliet uh, of uh, Jean-Christophe Mayo. And uh, we did an audition. So the, the lady was, who was setting up did an audition in the afternoon and, and it was my first day and I didn't expect anything. I was like, well, maybe I'm going to do core or maybe like a little role here and there. But, and then my name came out for the casting to be Romeo. And I thought it was so funny that I auditioned for that company, didn't yeah. get there, but you know, be there in, in Montreal and having that opportunity was really funny to me. And I was like, there is a connection in a way with, uh, with Monaco and Jean-Christophe Mayo. But from there, I felt like, because even if the work condition was were totally different from Paris Opera, you know, like it was, a, it was not a life contract. It was a year contract, renewable, uh, smaller company. The the studios were not as impressive as Paris Opera or Boston Ballet. Boston Ballet's facilities are amazing. So all the exterior was not as good, but everything from inside, which was like what I was going to be able to do, was amazing. And that's when I felt like, okay, I I'm somewhere where they want to develop me. Also. Even the the company, the people in the company were all different. You know, in Paris Opera, you have certain standards, 
here in Montreal, it was more like about the, um, the energy that you have, the, the, what you can bring, you know, as a character, uh, different body. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it was more um, who you were as a person more than as a standard dancer. So it was very interesting to me. And I remember seeing the first, because they, I didn't do the first show because they were, do, they were going on tour with Minus One of Hoan Marin and I didn't have time to learn it. So they were going in, in Germany with it. And I saw, as I was rehearsing Romeo and Juliet uh, on, you know, in the afternoon, in the morning, they were rehearsing Hoat. And that's how I saw the company for the first time, because I'd never seen them perform, you know? And I was sitting in the studio, I saw that piece and I was amazed. Nice. I was like, the way they moved. And, you know, I was a classical dancer, some, mm -hmm. com you know, compared to the, to the rap. And I was floored. And I remember like saying to my friend Benjamin, I was like, I've never seen people move that way. It was just amazing. And that piece is amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't know. it must be amazing it's, to do too. You know, it's your product it's, it's something a, bigger than you, right? And it's, uh, it's entertaining at the same time. It's, it feeds people. I don't know, it's, I, I, I love it. But I, I was really amazed by the company. I was like, I want to learn how to move like this, you know, mm -hmm. to, not to leave ballet, but you know, to- Enrich yourself. Better. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, I did my whole career there. I did 18 years, 18 years with Les Grands as a, as a dancer. 15 years, because I, yeah, from 30 to 45, I retired at 45, so four years ago. And it's been amazing. It's been amazing. We went on tour everywhere. We, we worked with uh, Kilian. We worked with uh, uh, Matzek, uh, we did some Balanchine. Uh, I mean, I had so many opportunities. It was, it, it was amazing, you know, and um, I'm very thankful for everything that has happened and for everything that that company gave me, you know, and that company developed in an amazing way. We have like new facilities now. Uh, it's, we have- And now you're a ballet master. So that was also a transition that was pretty organic with the flow again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it, at the same time, it also it happened with the new director. So mm -hmm. I, when I arrived at the end of my career, that's also when the, uh, Vladimir Pankov uh, decided to retire, and so the new director came in. And when he got there, I was like, you know, I'm at the end of my career, and I would like to keep trans. I would like to transition, but to, to keep working with the company. You know, I, I I would love to see the dancer develop as I develop myself. And it was like, okay, let's give it a try. And that's how I ended up. You know. Uh, yeah, working as a ballet master with the company now. So how is that? It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a thankless job. I mean, you know. It's, it's like... Yeah, I mean, the thankless, I think, I, I mean, I've been lucky so far that people have, the, the dancers have a very good relationship with the dancers. It's not always easy, but they are always actually very thankful and you know and it's, no, but i'm uh, not it's talking big. about the work with the dancers the whole job in itself is so huge so the, that no, <laughs> it's it's i mean it's I, I never thought i would have so many um hat to yeah, wear exactly yeah, to be yeah. i think the, the 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 work that you do in the studio which is very artistic like the coaching the teaching of the the, the choreography all of that it's like 30 percent of the job the mm -hmm. rest it's managing and finding solutions to problems uh, to make sure that the, the whole production goes on stage the way you want it to be and to be on the standards that the, the choreograph or the director wants the company to be. And, you know, it's, um, it's intense. It's very, very, very intense. And um, I mean, I learned a lot, <laughs> especially like using a computer, do you know that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and also the big difference is that when you are a dancer, you only focus on yourself. You know, you it's a it's a it's a very narrow height sight. Easy. You see your path. <laughs> <laughs> you you see um, you only see what you're gonna get, what you want to do in the next ballet or whatever, and you don't realize that uh, l'organism, you know, the organism of of a company goes so far beyond. You're and part not of a, something else, and you need exactly. To you, you you are like a little speck dot spec of, uh, of something and it goes beyond beyond you and I think it's it would be almost <laughs> interesting for every dancer to be part yes I to see. have a look at the other side of the company how it works you know so it would put things in perspective because sometimes 
I remember being a dancer and seeing your casting and be like, well, I don't understand. Why, do, why don't I get that part? Why, why I'm not in that ballet? And then you realize, oh, it's not because you're not good or you wouldn't fit. It's just because like, then your costume, they wanted like a, a blonde guy. They, they, you know, you have like no idea. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So it's, um, it's, a, it's been a learning curve for the first two years where I was like, okay, this is. It's like totally they say, you know, there's this saying that, you know, you should walk in, in, in somebody, someone else's shoes for eight miles before you start saying something about them, right? Exactly. And it's certainly true. We, exactly. We're so self centered as dancers and we need to be to survive also this thing. But exactly. it's amazing how, when you go on the other side. I often say that to my student. I say, listen. Why don't you be the teacher, you know, for five minutes? And then you'll see what it is. And people, yeah. you put them in this position and everything changes because they, they realize what it is to be on the other side, right? Exactly. And just also like how to deal with, you know, to be in front of like 40 people or 30 people during the day, you by yourself. Yeah. And so, you know, you get you get the anxiety of the dancers. You get the when not when they're not in a good mood, and you have to stay very um, neutral. Neutral. You have to acknowledge where they are to be able to work. Because sometimes, if they're not in a good mood, you have to find a way to bring them to the real soul. But you also have to. You cannot be too. Um, yeah, you have to be neutral. You know, and you uh, it's it's a job where you cannot take things personally. Of course, it touches you because you know, yeah, but a master yeah, human yeah, being. But yeah. you by yourself, and you have all those people waiting, you know, to have answers. They ask you sometimes. You know, people ask you questions, and you're like, "Well, right now, I don't have the answer, so I'm going to come back to you." And sometimes, you, as a ballet master, you can't know every count and every things, and so it's a, it's a teamwork that you have to build. So it's a relationship that you have to build with the dancers, and to be able to have a healthy relationship is to be able to accept that there's going to be conflict, that there's going to be um, not, I mean, there's going to be conflicts, not something that is um, personal, but something that's going to rose, that is going to rise and that's going to be um, um, uncomfortable. And being uncomfortable in that, in that job is something that is there every day. Facing your own discomfort. Exactly. You know, you yeah. come to a and you're like, well, I have no idea how I'm going to make it work or what, uh, what is going to be the solution or I didn't have time to review the like, choreography. So hopefully the dancers remember, you know, that kind of things. And it's, um, it's very, very different. Very, very, very different than a dance career. And <laughs> knowing you for a long time, I know that you're not very big with conflicts and, you know, confrontation yeah but i went <laughs> to therapy for like probably 12 years so I'm, i got better in it uh, and i mean before i was avoiding conflict which i'm not doing anymore i learned to be more uncomfortable and it's not always easy and i can tell you my sometimes i talk to my boyfriend about what happened and he's like wow that was intense i'm like yes it's, in, it's intense but i decided because the thing is like if you if you don't face the conflict then you ignore yourself and the more you ignore yourself the more you disappear and then you're not able to do the job you're not able to be yourself you cannot be with your boyfriend or girlfriend you cannot conflict is part of a relationship so it's gonna happen it's gonna be there and uh, yeah, and you're gonna have to deal with it. And uh, you know what? If if you go through it, the, your relationship with people is gonna be even better after Richer, that. Yeah, because then you're you, it's fuller, right? It's it's exactly it takes everything, not only you know whatever is right. <laughs> exactly, or whatever you makes you feel comfortable. It's just yeah. it's a clean slate after that. So you go through the conflict. You're like, well, we had a fight. We're gonna find a solution. If we don't, we'll deal with it and uh, then you can move on, you know? And so learning to say, I don't agree with you, which is with the dancers or with my director, you know, it happens mm -hmm. or my co-workers, my the other body masters, we get into fights, you know, and we, we, we don't agree and uh, it can be hit it, but I'm never, I'm not gonna back down anymore. And I've learned to say, no, I don't agree. And if they said to me, well, that's the way it's going to be, well, I'm going to be like, okay, because, you know, at the end of the day, I have to do the job, but I don't, I don't present what I used to present, which is I'm the good guy who's always going to say yes and ignoring myself. I don't. But I don't. You said a couple of times 
uh, during this interview that you know you talked about finding yourself, which I think is an interesting um, a comment. So could you talk to us? Because I mean, I know a lot about you and maybe whatever you want to share about this, I think that would be really welcome on this channel anyway. You know, um, what is it to find yourself? Uh, I think to find myself was to um, to accept myself, which was uh, not being perfect all the time. Um, coming out also to my parents, I, I think I came out, I was like probably around like 24, 24 years old. And my parents are very open-minded, which, which is weird that it took such a long time. But, you know, all those little steps where you accept yourself for everything that you are not only the good things but also the bad thing you know sometimes I can be very cold I can be harsh when I feel threatened I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you <laughs> you know it's and it's something that that's the way I am and I so how did you I, find all this I mean how did you do to to really find the courage to go that way because I think it needs it takes a lot of courage and, you know, a lot of people avoid it because it's easier. So well, I, 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 uh, I did, I had a burnout, you know, I was uh, probably around like 35, 36. I was in a relationship that was not very healthy. And I remember going into real souls and having no, um, no power. I couldn't lift a girl anymore, you know, and I was, I couldn't do things that I used to do and I was not injured or anything and I couldn't understand what was going on. And I remember being in, you know, not cracker rehearsal with a, it was in front of everyone, you know, when one of those rehearsal in studios and I started sobbing. I, I you know, I'm, I had, I had the, the hand of my, of my partner in my hand and we started walking and I was like, I can't. And the rehearsal stopped. Everybody was just wondering what was going on. And I left the studio and I went to my dressing room and I started sobbing. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I couldn't even take class, which class for me was always something that I loved. It was my time. I took class till I was 45 and I loved it and I still miss it. And I couldn't. I couldn't be seen. I couldn't be looked at. Um, and it was, it was a very, I think it was a breaking point. You know, and I've been lucky enough to have a good relationship with the academia, with the director. And it took me, we went to have a coffee and explained to him what was going on in my life, my personal life. And it was not going well. And he was like, take the time that you need. He was like, I still want you to come to work, to be surrounded by people so you're not alone. But you're not going to dance. You're just going to, you're going to take class in Nutcracker. You're going to do just Dressel Meyer with what's just like, you know, a character part. And he was like, you're going to come on tour with us and you're going to rebuild yourself. And after that, we had like probably like three weeks of vacation. And when that happened, it started to feel better. And like probably like a month after that, um, I saw the, 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 the sister of my, of my ex-boyfriend and I felt that same pressure. Yeah, you know that same thing, and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be destroyed again. So that's when I did that, decided to go to to see a therapist, you know, in core energetics, and from that day when I decided to to go to that therapist, my life started changing. I, in a way that I was taking responsibility for what was happening to me and not blaming it on the situation, the job, the people that I met or whatever, and. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's been a very long journey, you know, and I, that's when I had to face what I was dreading, conflict, expressing my, uh, my no, you know, which for me was a very hard thing to say. Um, that's when I actually, because of that, I met my boyfriend, my relationship with my parents uh, get better and better. And yeah, I was discovering myself, you know, in a, in a different way. I think very, it's very uh, beautiful, you know, that you that you share that with everybody. Because, uh, I mean, I know f from a fact what it takes to do this work. You know, I think it's the hardest. You know, I think it's Gary Zukav who he used to be a a pilot in Vietnam, and he said, you know, the road from your head to your heart is the hardest word you know, work that you can ever do. Because even being in war zone in a plane that was going to crash 
is not as scary as going inside of yourself and looking yeah. at everything you don't want to look at and owning it, you know, yeah. and you're like, this is me and I'm going to carry myself, you know, all yeah. the way. And I think, I think it's very beautiful what you just shared with us. So thank you. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask a question because I was not there actually. And I'm wondering, you know, when you had your meltdown, how was the company with you then, you know? Because that's what we're scared of is the is what, how people are going to perceive us and you know and and how this is going to be the end of the world and in the end, yeah, I mean, people were. I mean, I've been lucky to be in a in a company where people were really supporting uh, of each other. So I remember that when that happened, um, my friend Jeremy came into the, the the dressing room because I think he was in the dancing room. Was like, what's what's going on? I was like, I'm. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. And it was like, I'm sorry. And just the fact that he said, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. you know, I, it felt like, okay, I was acknowledged, you know, and I was not going crazy. And I think the fact that people came, ask, uh, came to ask me after, okay, what, what are you planning to do? What, what is going on? And I just told them, I, I told them, I don't know what's going on. I just know mm-hmm. that I don't feel good. And they were like, we're sorry. Just to hear the word, we're sorry, or we're there for you was, I never thought felt like I was being judged or, you know, I think mm-hmm. maybe because it was already a couple of years that I had been in the company, but I think people were respecting the work that I had done. So they knew that it was not something I was just like, yeah. oh, I don't want to, nah. you know, I was mm-hmm. always a hard worker. So I felt very supported in a way. And yeah, it was, a, it was actually a pretty great response. You and know, that's what like, I mean, you know, mostly dancers and I've seen students also when they get into it's depression and anxiety, right? It's yeah. really anxiety can really paralyze you. Um, most people think, well, they, they, they're not allowed to say it, you know, because it would go against them or they're weak or whatever. But this happens to just everybody. It's just, you know, that maybe it happens, you know, behind closed doors and nobody sees it. But you know, it's, we're just human. And I think it's really important to say, because I know above all in, you know, in ballet classes for kids who want to be professional, they think, they think that they cannot, they cannot be that, they cannot have that, there's no space for that. But the more they will make space for that to embrace it, the stronger they will be, because then they will know how to deal with it, you know? And that's yeah. what you just thought. This is beautiful. I like it. <laughs> And, and and I think it's, I mean, it's, I think people are also more aware now that no matter what you do, even if you do a job that you really love, you're going to face health problem, not only physical, but mental health problem. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a full depression. It's just, you're going to be a bit depressed, you know, sometimes or you're going to, you're going to have a real yeah, depression. Have a, it's right, right. It's a, exactly. It's, it's a right. And as it's a, a it's a career that it, you are so focused on yourself. Sometimes you don't even see the hands that are reaching to help you, you know, and it, it's that's why it's it's all it's very important, I think, to to still be aware of people that are surrounding you, you know, even if it's a career where you you like this, you know. Well, it's, it's also it. that you dance as a soloist. You want to be, you know, you have this this image of you who needs to do it all by yourself because you know eventually yeah. you're, so this is very true what you say you don't even see what's around and you yeah. definitely not feel that you should take a hand that's being you know given to you exactly yeah. exactly and i think the, the 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 more you open yourself to that the more you're going to grow as a person but also people are going to if, if you are totally open to people, somehow they respect you more. You know, it's when you hide something that people don't know how to take you, like to, to show that you're vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable. Yeah. Sorry, vulnerable. Authentic, I would say authentic. You know, to be real yeah. is very difficult. Authentic, exactly. And, and the more authentic you are, the more reachable you are, and the more people are, are going to respect you. And also it's going gonna, it's gonna to show also in your dancing, you know, in your work, in your relationship with everybody. And it's something that people, sh- that, I mean, we all forget because we're all so self-centered, you know, it's, it goes with the career, but it's some, something that is so important, you know, to, to be And authentic. I would say, I would add to this, that not only, um, you know, what you said is true, but also once you do that for yourself, you know, being authentic and real, 
you allow others to do it. Others and, to be exactly. And that's that's a gift that not only you yeah. do it yourself, but you do it for others because then they feel that they have the space to do it as well. Exactly. And and amazing things are coming out of this. Because when you allow yourself to do that and people allow themselves to do it, then you discover other things about people and you you are not judgmental you are you're allowing people to grow you know because it you take them completely not only in one the thing that makes you happy when you sometimes you have to allow people to be angry at you to be mad at you or to be sad in your soul you know there's nothing worse than sometimes i hear people like well smile you know i'm like maybe that then that person doesn't want to smile you know maybe oh, that was yeah. very hard for them and it's okay they still can work but they have to be able to work with the sadness or the anger that they have and it can be an amazing fuel you know mm -hmm. i remember having like a uh, real soul where i was really mad and things came out yeah. amazingly you know people are just like what what was that and you're just like well i just i was just so mad and so it's if you cut yourself from those emotions then you're going to cut, cut yourself from um, a part of yourself uh, of yourself and a part of your um light and your um essence. what you can bring to the world yeah exactly your essence and essence is is you need it to dance you need it to bring something you know to 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 help a choreographer to to be the artisan of a, of a piece you know it's important that that stays and that is being brought to light i think it's what is important well i think this is this is the biggest you know element that needs to be brought into the ballet world i think in my perspective you know it's having this consciousness and and this will this willingness to to dig further right because if we all did it's like the whole world right but i'm talking about the artistic world because that's what we're in but uh if we could all do that i think the 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 dynamic dynamics in companies or schools would change drastically, you know, because it's a complete different vision and complete uh, different. The result is completely different. No. So I think, you know, they're very lucky to have you um, in Les Grands Ballets. I'm lucky to have them, too, because, you know, it's, I, I, you, you know how it is when you're when you are with people and you're by yourself and you see like a, a, a full room of dancers. You bring them something but they also bring something of to you. you know, sometimes I, when i look at the dancers I'm, I'm amazed of what they can do but also what what they bring and how it touches me and how how they're devoted to to their passion and to the the, the, the company and sometimes i yeah i'm very thankful you know it goes it's it's a relationship that is so um, i always said to them you know it's teamwork i cannot do my job if you don't do yours and I cannot you cannot be great if I'm not great and you know it's the kind of thing that it's goes this way oh, yeah. you know it's an energy thing that keeps if if one of the energy is stuck then it doesn't go anywhere and it's, sure. it's stuck in many ways in many places so. yeah and it's still stuck sometimes in me you know sometimes of course, I but I mean that's what I'm saying all we yeah. need is the willingness to explore because because we're all stuck somewhere and we are all going to make mistakes and we're all going to argue for the wrong reason. But if behind there's this openness to say, okay, let's unwrap this, you know, and yeah. we don't know what's in it. Either yeah. parts don't know usually, you know, when there is a, a problem, we all mirrors for each other too. So, you know, yeah. you might also find something that you don't want to see in someone else, you know, so exactly. it's, it's yeah, fascinating. Because... I mean, sometimes you arrive in rehearsal and you're already mad because of something or, you, you know, you're mad at someone in particular or just a general thing. And, and sometimes I'm just like, well, I'm pissed. I'm going to do that yeah. rehearsal, but I'm so pissed for whatever reason. And sometimes, you know, I I think people see it in my face, but I have a very hard time to <laughs> not to show how I feel, uh, which is great for dancing. But, you know, sometimes it's not, <laughs> it can be yeah. a bit out of place. But I, I decided, well, you know, if I'm, I still can do my job even when I'm pissed at someone and I'm going to try to find a way of understanding why I'm so mad at this person and why it touches me some, so much today because sometimes it doesn't, yeah. doesn't have an impact and sometimes it does. So, And the fact that I allow myself to be in that, you know, so in touch with that also give me the opportunity to see why people, I mean, how people really are. You know, as mm -hmm. I was saying earlier, it's like 
sometimes people are not in a good mood or they don't they don't want to work yeah, exactly. or you know but then do you so, think do you think it would be possible in a company setting to you know organize you know meetings to actually talk about whatever is bothering everybody you know put that on a uh, and you know this could be led by like a family constellation person or just a um a therapist you know who is used to to dealing with emotions and 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 everything else i think yeah. that would be amazing you know to be able to let things out in a safe space where you know everybody right. can express themselves and be seen for who they are i think that would be really healthy yeah i i, I think so too i think it's i don't know if it's going to happen in the dance world because there is that history of you know people telling you what to do mm -hmm. people i mean when you're a dancer people tell you what the choreography is what time you have uh, to to be in a in real soul uh, uh what to wear you know that kind of stuff so it's it's taking away the um, we have that history of taking away the responsibility for the dancer you know and i think it would be such a great step to say okay you have that safe space where you can where we're going to Ex not accept you but where everything is open for you to say whatever you need to say on how you feel not, not about specifically problems or whatever but how do you feel what, what what kind of support do you need and i think it would be very very positive for companies to do yeah. that but i think it takes, it takes a leadership and a, a willingness also from from the top you know to be open on it and, well, and, and also the, from the bottom because you know you have a yeah lot of exactly and, and and it brings a lot of fear so mm -hmm. it's also yeah. as, as we were saying it's like are you ready to face the fear you know because sometimes when you have a meeting when with someone yeah. they tell you what well, don't think you're doing good or whatever and you know and you should know that or you should do that and and again, it's uncomfortable. I but think I that's really... why nonviolent communication would be amazing, you know, because you yeah. you never blame anybody else. You express how you feel in a circumstance. Yeah. So you just, you know, it, it has nothing to do with it. But, you know, I've thought a lot about this, what you said, you know, about, oh, you have to, dancers have to do what they're told and whatever. And I don't agree with this, you know, because I always told my student also, you know, Yes, I'm going to give orders in the sense that my voice is, you know, and it's it's a direction and whatever. But they made the choice to come here to learn and to do this, so they're not disempowered. They've made a choice. They they've made a commitment. They've and this is very important to remember, even for dancers. Listen, guys, you signed a contract not to be subdued. You signed a contract to do your job as best as you can, which means yeah. you have to be on time. You have to push yourself because otherwise it's not going to work. You have to go beyond <laughs> the limits because this is what you signed for. And this is what you want, not what I want. I'm just exactly. helping you to do what you want. And yeah. the sun is, is like shining on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying fun. to go like, well, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, I think, I think this is very important to remind dancers because it's so easy to become a victim of everything. And you're like, no, honey, this is your passion and your passion demands this. And exactly. your expectation of yourself demands that. And I'm just here to help you. I'm just here to be the, the guide, you know, to make you look as good as possible. And then it's different dynamic all of a sudden, of you know? Of course, but it's also as, as when, when you bring that to the, to the table it's you empowering the person to take responsibilities for yeah. their career for the way they for the way they work but not everybody's willing to do that no, most I of the time people, people, yeah most of people are like no no do it for me yeah. or show me how to do it so i don't have to invest myself so much so i don't have to be uncomfortable yeah. and for, unfortunately dance is uncomfortable in every way because once <laughs> you, you know something somebody's going to come behind and say oh well that's not how it should be done or maybe you can try yeah. differently like eh, i don't want to i don't want to it feels uncomfortable but it, yeah i think i think most of the com for most of the companies we forget i mean ours included me myself sometimes you know we forget that if you want a human being to develop themselves fully in their potential you have to give them a space where they can fail also you know that where yeah. because it, it's that's how you progress you know but it, it depends times. how you define fail 
Yeah, exactly. But you know, that's that's the thing. It's like usually in, in class, sometimes I said to them, okay, try uh, today we're gonna do Tommy Padbure five pirouettes. And I'm and they fail. I'm like, you fail. Great. It's it's nothing. You just fail. That's how you're gonna yeah. you know keep getting better. You have, goal. Fighting. You have the yeah. goal of five pirouettes. You have, goal. You, know, you have a goal and uh, and if you need to fail somewhere, it's right now because that's maybe that won't be any tomorrows, you know. So it's something that keeps building up and not being afraid of failing and 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 trying again you know it's uh, and that's that's also true in your um, mental health develop, development yeah. which means that you don't have to be perfect you don't have to go through a career without any injuries or any breakdown or whatever no you're going to go through it and that's how you're going to get bigger yeah, and just... better time more <laughs> yeah, yeah no important. it's true it's it's um great um oh, i love this conversation okay Ove, it's been an hour already so i don't want to make it too long for people mm -hmm. i'm gonna ask you a last question you know if there was one advice you could give to a young dancer starting their career today if just one thing what would that be don't lose time don't lose time um hoping that things are going to come you're going to make your own opportunities and and it's a short career so don't lose time on bickering or spending time on thinking what you should have done what keep going forward on your own career uh, be responsible for your responsible for your choices um and um there's support also around so that would be two advices. You're not always alone. You know? <laughs> okay, okay. That's two big ones, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. It was wonderful to chat, and I really love that conversation. I think we could we could even do a part two. <laughs> on healing. Whatever you want. <laughs> I, think, I think I want to gather several people together, and we can talk about it. I think that would be really helpful for, yeah. for young dancers. Hervé, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was amazing. I miss seeing you every day. <laughs> me too. <laughs>